Hi. This week in Emerging Ed Tech, we have a tutorial that takes us through the basic ins and outs and some of the capabilities of five different free image and photo editing applications that are, uh, four of them are online applications and one of them is one that you can download locally. So as I explained in this week's blog post out on Emerging Ed Tech, this tutorial that you're about to see originated with a webinar I uh, was lucky enough to be a part of earlier this week and you can read about that out on the blog post. And this material ultimately had its origins in a series of posts I did last October in which I looked at a bunch of different image and picture editing tools and, and that culminated in a final post in which I ended up recommending five particular applications that I thought were really each had their own value to offer and those are the applications we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at today. So we have the Phoenix Image Editor from Aviary, which is at www.aviary.com. We have Photoflexer at photoflexer.com. Picasa from Google, found at picasa.google.com. Pixinate at pixinate.com. And Photofunnia at photofunnia.com. Each of these has some unique and interesting features we're going to take a look at, as well as looking at how to upload uh, images and then how you can uh, save or publish images from those tools. So first we have the Phoenix Image Editor, which is part of a suite of tools from Aviary. And as you can see, there's quite a few different tools here. Music Creator, Audio Editor, Screen Capture, and so on. So a very powerful suite of tools. And today we're just going to look specifically at the Phoenix Image Editor. If we go ahead and click on this button, it's going to bring us down to another screen here where they show us some cool creations that have been made recently with their application. And if we go ahead and click on Launch Phoenix, it's going to bring us down to this next screen where we can load an existing file in order to start working with an image. We get this screen where we can upload a file from our computer or from a URL. After we pick the image we want, we'll see it in the image editor. So here I've loaded a picture of my daughter's eyes and if I start looking at the menus now I see I have this edit menu up here and some of the functionality I get there under transform is things like rotate or flip the image horizontally or vertically and on the next uh, menu, on the image menu, we get lots of these standard kinds of controls you would want particularly with photographs so things allowing you to adjust levels and brightness and contrast, hue and saturation or, or pick an auto levels option or um, funkier things like uh, invert colors. Looking at the next uh, menu we have a layer section which allows us to bring another image in and do things uh, in, in layers between the two images. Um, next I'm going to look at the filters menu which uh, has some of these neat little effects so things like metal glow and pointing eyes and so on. And in this uh, case I've gone ahead and applied the emboss image just as an example to this particular picture. And then just for kicks, I went back over to the uh, image menu and chose invert colors just to see how you can apply multiple effects and create some pretty interesting results. Next, let's take a look at what happens if you go to save your uh, presentation and how you can do that. And you really have two choices. You can use the save as function to essentially save it online uh, where it could also be published. Uh, there's also a separate option we'll look at in a moment that allows you to export the image to your computer. If we click the Save As option, we'll get some choices. Now, the important thing is you do have to create an account if you want to save it online, whereas you don't if you choose to just export it to your computer. Um, if you do choose to save it online, you're going to have to create an account, log in and register, and go through that process, which is quick and easy. And then if you come back here, uh, I want to point out about this Customize option here. Uh, I should also mention you put the title up here, whatever you're going to call your, um, your edited image, and you can put a description and tags. If you choose the customize option, you're going to get a screen where you're allowed to indicate is this image copyrighted fully or are you willing to share it under one of these two Creative Commons uh, licensing scenarios. And what will happen is then if you publish your uh, edited image online, there's going to be a link that indicates what the licensing terms are and, it will, and it will, if you click on it, they'll see this. If you don't want to register and save the image online, you can go just go ahead and hit File and Export, and that will give you the option to save your image uh, on your computer in either PNG, GIF, JPEG, or TIFF formats. So that option is there. You don't have to create an account at all. So you can go out to an app like this, do what you want, save your image locally, and there's just nothing. There's no kind of installation to do, no account creation, nothing to do other than uh, have fun with the images and, and save your copies of them. 
Okay, next we're going to go ahead and take a look at PhotoFlexor. And you can see here on PhotoFlexor's main page that they uh, build themselves as the world's most advanced online image editor. And they certainly are good. I'm not enough of an expert to profess whether or not they really um, have earned that title. But uh, nevertheless, let's go ahead and get into PhotoFlexor. Um, so if you click on, uh, sorry, I went kind of quick there. If you click on this Upload Photo button, it's going to take you to a screen like this where you can upload the photo from your computer, or you can upload photos. You can get photos from all these different social networking sites uh, that you may participate in. So that's really nice. Here I've gone ahead and uploaded uh, an, another image of my daughter. And what I'm going to do is look at all these tabs here and discuss some of the functionality there and try some of it out. So first we're on this basic tab, which has things like Auto Fix and Red Eye Fix. Uh, Red Eye Fix is very popular, very nice function to have, and some of these other tools have that. Uh, so here I've applied Auto Fix. I don't know how easy it is to see the difference in the picture here and then the picture here. It's definitely kind of sharpened up. Next we take a look at PhotoFlexor's Effects tab, and here you see all kinds of cool effects. These things, a comic image, blur edges, blueprint, neon. They all give these different effects to the picture, and what's nice too is if you try one, like here I've tried the comic one, it, it shows you what it's going to look like in kind of a preview format, and you can then choose to go ahead and apply that effect to the image, or you can just cancel and back right out. Here I've gone on to the Decorate tab, where there's things like adding glitter text to the image, or just text and stickers, uh, manipulating with draw, erase, and fill, those kinds of things. Also some other neat things, like I clicked on this Borders option, and I was able to apply a nice little border to the picture. So next we have these uh, a this Animations tab, and currently there are these options of animated stars, animated lovies, or animated stickers. And just to show how that works, here I've put a butterfly sticker. Um, it, on the live site, when you do this, the butterfly sticker will glitter. Uh, that doesn't show up here in the uh, slide version of the presentation, sorry. Next, we have a Beautify section where you get these smooth and sharpen options and options to fi fix blemishes and smooth wrinkles. Those could be certainly be handy. Uh, we have a bunch of distort options on the distort tab, so applying a twirl, bulge, stretch. I had a little um, trouble with that. When I tried it, it didn't work, so I didn't get a chance to go back and, and just give it another shot, but I moved on because uh, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, so a layer section where, again, you can bring in other images and layer them over and create different relationships kind of between them. So here, just to try it out, I went ahead and layered a flower picture and then layered its original picture over it just to give a little bit of a sense of uh, how something like that might work. And last are some options that it has uh, under the tab Geek. Um, so resizing and coloring and other things. And again, I uh, didn't try everything, um, but did try quite a few things. And you can see PhotoFlex are absolutely a fun uh, kind of tool for this sort of thing. Let's look next at how we can save. So if we click on this save option in the upper left hand corner, it's going to come out and give us the option to save locally to our computer as a JPEG or a PNG um, ping file. Uh, or uh, just as we could pull from many different social media um, applications, we can also save to many social media applications. So full range of ways to uh, be able to save and publish and share your uh, applications, your I'm sorry, your images that you edit with PhotoFlexor. All right, so the Phoenix Image Editor as part of the Aviary Suite and PhotoFlexor are both some great, powerful, neat image and photo editing tools, a lot of fun. Uh, next, we're going to look at three more that each uh, have their own kind of unique things I wanted to share. Uh, first, we have Picasa from Google, and Picasa is notably different than all four of these other apps in that you have to download Picasa. So you go to picasa.google.com, download it, install it, and it's going to go out and it's going to look and find all your um, image files on your computer and organize them in folders for you to mess around with. So uh, Picasa has uh, uh, various um, editing options just like the other tools have. Uh, well, I shouldn't say just like. I mean, it will vary in terms of what you can do. But I really wanted to point out some specific things you can do with Picasa. Again, first of all, it is um, you know installed locally. So that can be kind of nice, for example, if you you want kids to work with these things and you don't want ha or you don't have access to the internet if you can at least get it to install and then you run it locally you don't have to have them going out to the internet to use these tools so that's kind of nice um, 
Here we start to get into some of the interesting things Picasso does that I didn't really see necessarily done this way, especially for large groups of images uh, in any of the other tools. So if we go to folder and hit export as HTML page, we'll get some options as to what format of HTML page. So uh, for example, this is a two page format with a bold white background where you'll see all the pictures in one page and if you click one it'll pop up another page to show you that picture. And here I've gone ahead and done that. I was running Picasa installed on a network and it what it did is it exported all these files to a folder on the network. If you run it on your local PC, it'll create that HTML file on your local PC. And then if I were to click on one of these pictures, I'm sorry I don't have a capture of it right now, but if I click on one of these pictures, it did open uh, that picture in a separate window. So a way to create an HTML page um, from a bunch of pictures, kind of nice. Moving on, we're looking under the picture menu and definitely another unique thing here that I didn't see in other applications was a batch edit function. So you could edit pictures individually, but you could also grab a bunch of them and do things like add a sepia function or a film grain look, um, some effects, auto red eye correction on a batch of pictures. That's certainly really nice. So that was uh, pretty cool, I thought. Next, I've just brought up this create menu here where you can do things like make a poster or a picture collage, do some make, make a movie um, using these pictures, uh, and a lot of neat stuff that again is unique to Picasa. And under the tools section, we see a bunch of different kinds of functionality that also is kind of unique to the way this works. Um, and you can interact with people. Uh, I, I did not go ahead and look at all of that functionality here. Sorry, I can't look at every feature of every one of these tools or we'd be here for hours. So we'll wrap up with Picasso by just saying that it definitely has some unique functionality, uh, partly as a result of having it work as a local tool where it makes it easier for, to work with large sets of files, but also a lot of unique ways to interact with the web. And a lot of these tools also put things in place to help make it easy for you to create things that you might be able to then buy, like a coffee mug or a t-shirt with a picture on it or that sort of thing. Um, and Picasso also has that kind of functionality. Next we're going to take a look at Pixinate. Now again, uh, I want to focus on some things that are kind of different about Pixinate or jumped out at me. Um, and so to start we would click on uh, the link to upload an image and uh, then you just upload from your hard drive and then you can go ahead and start editing. Um, there's a small editing window for your image um, and the first thing I wanted to point out that I saw here and didn't see anything else was there's this teeth whitening um, function. So if you click on that it lets you click over an area of the um, image you have and it whitens it a little bit uh, so it can uh, it be an, a nice little kind of thing to use that I didn't see anywhere else and then uh, really what I wanted to show particularly was the fun effects some different kinds of fun effects here that I didn't see elsewhere so if you click on the link here it brings you down to a screen where you can see these effects and just to show you an example of one there's this Lomo effect which puts a shadow around the edge like this and I thought that was kind of nice um, and a bunch of other things going on in Pixinate as well. Definitely worth checking out if you're looking for something you don't see in an aviary or PhotoFlexer or in another tool you like to use. Here we see how to save. If we click on save, um, we just get the option to save as a JPEG. Now this was another reason why I didn't spend as much time on Pixinate as I did on the other applications because uh, its ability to uh, import and export and save published files is more limited than they are. But again, a great kind of a backup app. Maybe you're looking to do something you can't quite find in one of the other apps. And last but certainly not least, we will wrap up with Photofunia. Photofunia is very unique, very different. What it really allows you to do is insert your picture into any one of what are currently over 200 effects. So you can just scroll up and down through all the different effects that are out there. And when you, and you pick one and click on it, then you um, upload a file by clicking this Choose File button. And once the file's up there, you hit Go, and it's going to stick it into your template. And there it is. Your picture is in the template. And it's really a cool, neat, unique kind of thing that's absolutely worth playing around with. And you can make a, you know, your own very uh, interesting um, picture using a photograph uh, very quickly. And then you can go ahead and save it. Uh, you can save it. It will save as a JPEG file. Um, there's a couple little options there, but it's really just, again, as a JPEG file. There's also some, a uh, few sharing options, so Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. And uh, again, absolutely worth checking out and having some fun with. And then last, we have a couple slides here where I talk about some different ways to potentially use these tools in the classroom. 
Um, this presentation was uh, intended originally for educators, although obviously anybody who cares to learn about these photo and image editing apps may have come out and checked out this tutorial, uh, but I am going to wrap up with this. Uh, so just some ideas here and um, these ideas, I'm not going to read them off, read the slides off, uh, but uh, in addition to being here, uh, they're also out on um, the, the actual blog post itself. So if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, uh, you'll see the URL down below where you can click and get over to the blog post to check these things out further. Um, and if you're uh, watching on the blog, then you've already, uh, you've already got access to that. So uh, thanks. I hope you enjoy using these applications as much as I did and find fun and engaging ways to use them in and out of the classroom. Thank you.